This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a vlog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or I'm learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. This is part two of uh, nitroethane synthesis. So anyways, I let this stir for two hours, okay? And then it got all willy wonky, got wobbly and stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, this is moving slightly back and forth or whatever. And uh, it all needed readjusted. So I just said, screw it. I got two hours of stirring in. I just let it sit. Every hour, I, you know, I did this kind of thing with my hand, you know, to stir it, shake it around a little bit. But only like once an hour. Went to sleep. And I got back up this morning. And now I am going to do another two hours of stirring. And then I will test it. Okay. And I think even if it's not completely done. I think it's completely done now. I mean this powder inside there. That is totally gray now. There's not one speck of yellow in there. Um, so we'll see. I couldn't get, get up to finished this yesterday so it sat all day yesterday and a little bit of today no stirring um, it definitely is a different color um, so I'm going to filter it all and I'm going to use some bath leafy to wash this all out and get it all filtered I'll get back with you when I'm done. All right, so there's the solid. You can see I have it on some paper towel, and I'm going to spread it out, put it in some darkness, and let it dry up a little bit, get that diethylether off of there. At least it's a nice low-boiling thing, you know what I mean? And it's volatile. It will evaporate pretty easily, I'm hoping. Remember, don't put this by, you know, like I have my stove right there. You shouldn't really do that. Put it where there's no pilot lights going, no fire, no, you know, anything like that. All right, so there it is. That's silver bromide. All right, so there's all the filtrate. Here's some more ethanol azeotrope and some silver nitrate. Not nitrite, nitrate. I'm going to put a little bit of this into there and uh, see if any precip comes out. I, I think it's not done. So it didn't have much stirring, but. Shake this up. Let it sit for a while. You can see down at the bottom, I'll let this sit for a while. Down at the bottom there, there's, there is some precip. This reaction is not done, but I'm just sick and tired of it right now. And uh, I just want to see what the, what the yield is. Well, you can see I put all the filter in a thousand round bottom flask. Um, I got a bigger edge problem. And I'm just going to distill that off. You can see over here is some collection flask. First I'm going to distill off the uh, ether. So there's a receiving flask. You can see it dripping. I'm trying to slow it down. It's actually coming over too fast but I figure there's a lot of ether going a little fast. Won't hurt kill it that much. Well as you can see I'm finally almost done. It's trying to creep up to 35 degrees, but I won't let it because um, I know there's still a lot of fat ether in there. You know, when I put this that stuff in here, I filtered everything once, but there was a little bit of silver bromide in there, and I wanted to throw it in the freezer, which I did, and it all settled to the bottom. And then I forgot about it, and I just dumped it in there without filtering it again. So there's a 
big clump of, you know, there's a lot, of, not a lot, but there's a lot of uh, silver bromide in there. I'm hoping that doesn't mess things up. You can see it clumped at the bottom now. So as soon as it starts, when I can't keep it at 35 degrees anymore, I'll get back with you. Well, there's barely anything in there. Here's the... That's the receiving flask. There's the pot. You can see there's barely anything in there. But that is a 1,000 milliliter round bottom flask, so even a little bit of the bottom is going to be something. Um, <clears throat> everything's been going great, and then all of a sudden it stopped coming over. I'm assuming that it's getting ready to... Yeah, the pot's almost at 70 Celsius. So there is more diethyl ether in there, but I think it's about ready to ready to switch over. So at least I made something. Let's see how much I'll get back with you. Well, it's about 80 degrees now. I wish it would hurry up and get up to 110, 112. I'd be more happy. This is what after I got the diethyl ether out. This is what's been coming over so far. And like I said, it's up to 80 C right now. So I'm going to have a very low yield. Although my expected yield was only like 30 milliliters or something like that. So, all right. So this is my new apparatus. You can see this is what I got left. That's a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. So what's in there? Like five milliliters. Um, that's all the stuff that's you know should have the nitroethane. Um, I put it in a smaller apparatus, smaller everything. Here you can see the receiving flask. Um, so I'm gonna distill it over and see how much I got. Obviously, if that's five milliliters, I can only get like four milliliters. Um, I'm disappointed on how small this yield is. This is a real, I, I should have done a smaller batch. As usual, I put all my eggs in one basket like an idiot. Anyways, let's distill this and see what I get. Uh, now this is a 25 milliliter flask. This came over first. Um, it's like a mill, milliliter of stuff that came over between 85 and 90. Now this is the actual nitroethane. That's again 25 milliliter flask. I'm going to call that three milliliters. You know what I mean? I'm not going to weigh it up or whatever or put it in a, a uh, graduated cylinder or anything. It's too little. It's a crappy yield. Um, but I'm going to figure out the yield here in a second. But that's basically it right there. It's nice and crystal clear. All came over about 112 Celsius. And that's it. That is a terrible, terrible, terrible yield. I'm going to definitely have to try this, ex try this experiment again um, because this was such a crappy yield. So next time I'll get a better yield. Um, but like I said, I put a description in the, in the description underneath the video. I put a link to Chem Player's video doing this, and he doesn't make any mistakes. So. But even though this was a terrible video or a terrible experiment, you know what I mean, where it's pretty much a failure, I did learn a hundred things. Um, and I definitely can improve it next time, I know that. The stirring, I, I didn't do much stirring. Okay, so here's the equation. Um, here's my molar masses, molar volumes. Uh, the silver nitrate, I had use what I had which was 107 grams I take that and divide it by the uh, molar mass to get the percentage so I got 69.5 percent of a mole that's how much silver nitrate I used so I want to use the same percentage because it's mole for mole down here for the ethyl bromide see how it's 74 milliliters so I multiplied that by the percentage I got 51.87 milliliters I used 50 milliliters because I wanted to be able to test to see when all this 
bromide, ethyl bromide, was done, you know, being converted to the nitro group. And uh, to do that, I needed more of the nitrite than, than ethyl bromide, you know what I mean? So anyways, I used 50 milliliters. So I divide that by the molar mass of, uh, or the molar volume of ethyl bromide, and I find out that that's 67% of a mole. That's my limiting reagent is the ethyl bromide, so that's how I'll figure out my yield. I use 67% of a mole. Well, here's how much a mole is of nitroethane. That's its molar volume. So I multiply that by 0.67. And I get 47.715 milliliters. Now that is my theoretical yield. If I would have got 100%, I would have got 47.7 milliliters. I got 3 milliliters. That's sad. So I divide it by my theoretical yield. And I get 0 0.063. That converts to 6.3%. That was my yield. 6.3%. That's pathetic. I think you, you should be able to get at least like 50 to 80 percent on this somewhere in there you know what I mean so 6.3 percent is sad um, next time I'll definitely either do a, a smaller batch or I will have a better heavier dutier way to uh, stir it I had I had a good idea for the mechanical stir I should have used this I should have used something like this that way I'd have a large opening uh, you know what I mean? I could have really stirred it very good with a mechanical stirrer, um, but I didn't. Uh, I barely stirred it at all. That was, all, that was a waste of time. But I did learn a lot of things um, on this experiment, so I'm glad I did it. And I'm definitely going to try it again because this is sad. Um, that will that will you. Anyways, you have a great day and always remember science is great.